All of us want to know how do I pay less tax to SARS? What deductions and what exemptions are available to me? What can I do to reduce my tax? So in this video, I'm going to walk you through all the deductions or the main deductions that, that's available to employees and how you can pay less tax year by year and maybe get a refund from SARS. So stick around. Hello, this is Andre Botma helping you to get good with tax and money matters. And on this channel, I teach tax principles and helping you with SARS e-filing. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. So the most important thing about income tax and figuring out how to pay less tax is to understand the income tax framework. Now, underneath the income tax framework, we start with checking out what is my gross income? Where does all my income come from? And then you see, do I have any exemptions? Do I have any deductions? Those two items reduce your tax. Then do I have any capital gains that I need to pay capital gains tax on? And then that calculates your taxable income. So the way you reduce your tax is by taking advantage of the exemptions and deductions that's available to you. The rule of thumb here is the lower your taxable income, the less tax you pay. The common deductions that's available to employees are the retirement annuity, pension fund and provident fund contributions. If you receive a travel allowance, you can get a travel allowance deduction. If you work from home, you can deduct your home office expenses to a certain extent. If you donate to Section 18A registered organizations, you can get a deduction. And then finally, you can get medical aid tax credits for the medical aid contributions that you make yourself or that you make for another person. So underneath the retirement annuity and pension and provident fund contributions that you can make, the retirement annuity is funded by you. And so you can buy a retirement annuity wherever, you know, with a financial institution, or you can get a pension or a provident fund, but this is, this is doing it via your employer. So if your employer provides a pension plan or a, or is part of a pension plan or a provident fund, it might be a good idea to, you know, to buy into that. And often employers, it's a requirement that you must be part of a pension fund or provident fund. Okay. And when you make these contributions, you can make up to 27.5% uh, contributions. That's the limit of the, of your deduction. And it's quite a lot to a maximum per tax year of 350,000. So you can imagine that 27.5% deduction is quite big. And it does, and this is the one thing that can guarantee that can almost guarantee you a refund from SARS. But just remember that this is a tax deferred product. And what, what does that mean? A tax deferred product means that you get the deduction now, but when you retire, when you reach the age of either 55 or 60 or 65, when you decide to, to take the money, the annuity or the pension creates a monthly income to you that is then taxed so the the money that you've set aside throughout your life that you get the deductions for eventually you can get an annuity income from that and that is taxed okay and for more information you can actually check section 11f of the income tax act and so just an example mary has an income of two hundred and fifty thousand per annum and contributes 10% of her income to a retirement annuity. Her gross income was 250, less a deduction of 25,000, leaving her with a taxable income of 225,000 Rand. Now the tax on that is, is about 42,000 Rand. And if she didn't make any RA contributions, the tax would have been on the 250 rather than a 225. And that makes a tax 48,500 Rand. So there's about a 6,500 Rand tax saving because she contributed to the retirement annuity. So you can see it makes quite a big difference depending on the percentage that you put away into, into your retirement annuity. 
Then with regards to travel allowance, if you receive a travel allowance from your employer or, it, or it's part of your remuneration package that you get, the code on your RP5 is 3701, then you can get a travel allowance deduction. However, if you receive a travel allowance of 50,000 for the year, the deduction will be limited to that 50,000. You can't deduct more than the allowance that you received. So that's just very important. Also, you will not get the allowance from SARS if you do not keep a logbook. So it's very important that you keep a logbook and I will link in the description uh, to the SARS logbook that you can use. And the big thing is you need to track the business expenses that you travel. The more business expenses you actually travel as part of your employment or as part of the job that you do, the greater the, greater the deduction you can get towards your travel allowance. Here's just a very um, a simple guideline of what is business kilometers. There is, this is something that uh, people ask me often. And so if you travel from home to work and back, those kilometers are considered private. However, if you're driving from work to a client or to a conference or any such, any such travel or you are travel for work purposes, those are considered business kilometers. So the travel from your workplace to the client and back, those are business. And then also if you travel from home to the client or to the conference or the business meeting or whatever the case may be, those are also your business kilometers. So the travel between home and work is private and the travel from home to client or work to client and back is business kilometers. Then home office expenses is available to people who works mainly from home and what that means is 50% or more of the time that you work, uh, if that is done from home, then you can get a deduction for the home office expenses that you pay out of pocket for. The deduction is limited to the size of your home office. Is If your home is 100 square meters and your office is 10 square meters, you can only, you, you must apportion the expense by 10%. And so let's just look at the expenses that you can deduct. So you can deduct in that case 10% of your rent. If the if you own the property and you are paying a bond, there will be interest. So you can deduct 10% of the interest that you pay. Or if you have some repairs and maintenance uh, specific to the office, you can deduct that expense as well. Under section 11E, you can deduct depreciation. So for example, if you bought computer or you bought office furniture, then you can also deduct depreciation against your employment income. And then finally, section 23M prohibits employees from deducting trade expenses. Literally all other expenses, even if you do incur them, if you're a normal employee, not commission and not independent contractor, then you can't deduct any other expenses other than the ones that I've listed here. Okay, it's just unfortunate. And I hope that change, that will change because of, you know, COVID and 2020, I think a lot of people will want to claim the things that they pay for, like maybe um, the internet that they've been using that they pay out of pocket for, maybe um, cell phone, cell phone and telephone costs, I can imagine those must be, the, that's a change that needs to come in. Then we look at donations. If you make donations to a registered Section 18A organization, you are allowed or you can get a deduction of up to 10% of your taxable income. And just make sure that if you, um, that if you make the donation, you need to receive a certificate from that organization which proves that the donation was made to a section 18a organization otherwise again SARS will disallow it finally with regards to medical aid contributions 
The medical aid contributions has to be towards a registered medical scheme and you get tax credits for that depending on how many dependents you have. If you have only one dependent, let's say it's just for yourself, it's 310 Rand a month. If it's two dependents, it goes up to 620 a month. And then for each and every additional dependent is an additional 209 Rand per month that you can get as a tax credit. Now it's important this just reduces the tax bill. So it's not a traditional deduction like donations and retirement annuities. Okay. An important point is that your any additional medical expenses that you have outside of your medical aid contributions will be limited by 7.5% of your income if you're under 65. What that means is a lot of your medical expenses will not be allowed as an additional credit. However, this limitation will fall away if you're over 65 or if you're disabled or you are taking care of somebody from a financial point of view who's also disabled. So that's just very important. If you're over 65, that limitation falls away. You can get a refund and you can reduce your taxes by doing things like your RA. Maybe you can get a travel allowance and then you get a travel allowance deduction. Maybe you don't belong to a medical aid and maybe it's a good idea to become a member of medical aid in order to help you get a tax refund. And so those all those are all things that you can consider if you are if you are a standard employee. But unfortunately, employees are generally quite tax inefficient, especially due to Section 23M, the limitation of trade. Um, that means that you know employees can't deduct trade expenses unless you earn commission or you're a, an independent contractor. And then all other entities or most other entities can deduct their trade expenses. They are not limited by Section 23M. These are commission earners, independent contractors, uh, self-employed persons, partnerships, companies, uh, even trading trusts. They aren't plagued by Section 23M and therefore they can deduct a lot more expenses. And so they have a lot more tools to pay way less tax than employees ever could. So if you have any questions, leave a comment below and yeah, you can ask me and I will try and answer them to the best of my ability. But I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers.